Okay, I'm sending you a little software upgrade I put together that should allow you to detect which files will lead to a data stream overload. Unfortunately, I'm not doing this to help you avoid them. In fact, I'm going to need you to search for more. I'm sorry about that. But if we're going to unlock all the systems that aren't responding, you'll have to connect to the data stream, possibly more than once. It's the only way for me to get access. Okay. In this area, there seems to be a problem with the... the machine that makes the Tetromino bridges. That means you can solve the puzzles, but you can't activate the tower. Look for a lab that lets you connect to the data stream. I already found it. I'll send you the coordinates.
couple of years back, we went on a scavenging expedition to an ancient industrial complex south of New Jerusalem. It was enormous, sprawling, an area many times bigger than our whole city, just dedicated to manufacturing. It was incredible to think about the sheer variety of things they produced. And it made me realize how austere, how restricted our lives are. You know how most ancient structures are overgrown? It's kind of pretty, but in a sad way. Well, this one wasn't. There had been some kind of chemical spill. I don't know if it happened while the structure was still operational or if something had just rotted through, but it killed everything. Even centuries later, nothing could grow. If a chemical spill can do that much damage, imagine what the megastructure could do. Is it ethical for us to risk that?
Today, we were delighted to be visited by a bunch of protesters, these voluntary extinction weirdos who think we're creating soulless monstrosities that will destroy the planet. <sighs> they broke into the facility and started yelling at everyone. Fun, 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 right? Then, oh, then one of them lunged at Alex. Big mistake. Chernyshevsky grabbed the guy and literally threw him across the room. I mean, almost threw him all the way off the dam. After that, eh, the rest of them had a change of heart. Now, I'm telling you this because mostly it is not like that. But you know, these people do exist. And somewhere in their shriveled little souls, they think that they're doing the right thing. They think they're being righteous. Now, to me, what Alex is trying to do is an obvious good. But that's not the same for everyone. Father, I updated the Noema algorithm. It's working twice as fast now, and I think I can increase matter output by 25% if I tweak the modulator a little. I'm so excited! Nice to meet you, so excited. I'm Cornelius. What? Oh, Dad! This is science! <laughs> you have no idea how long I've been waiting for the right moment. Did something break? Now I suspect Byron is still logged in, and his presence has thrown everything out of whack. Entire subsystems are locked down, and everything that depends on those subsystems is disrupted. There was a short burst of noise on the frequency we used to communicate, but that could have been anything. He taught me a lot when I was young. Nowadays, people just know him as the museum curator, but back then, he was closely involved with every engineering project, and he was brilliant. When he encountered a problem, he'd always remain calm and keep working at it until he found a solution. I wish I could be that patient. If I had to guess... I'd say so that Cornelius could still go back for anything they needed. He was always leaving on expeditions anyway, looking for materials for his projects.
this place. It's beautiful, isn't it? Mesmerizing. That's how it lures you in, I think. You see all these beautiful things and your imagination starts working overtime. And then the puzzles, the towers, the mysterious apparitions, it all draws you further in, deeper into the trap. What if that's the whole point of this place? What if every time you have one of those visions, another little bit of you is corrupted, overwritten with the hubris of this place? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to suggest you were, uh, whatever it is I'm trying to say. I guess I'm just disappointed in myself. Byron needs me. You all need me to do my job, and I can't even use a terminal. If this is all really the work of the founder, I don't know, maybe she lost her way. Or maybe we're just not ready. But once we find Byron, I suggest we get the hell out of here and never come back. Ancestors kept telling themselves that the brevity of their lives didn't matter. But they had so little time to ever really think about anything. I've spent several human lifetimes studying this mystery, and only now am I beginning to see. The simulation was built on top of material reality, unable to escape its constraints. In the same way, physics as we understand it, even quantum physics, is built on top of a deeper reality a set of rules that define existence itself. There is a universal language of creation, and I think we can learn it. The language of creation. What were they doing here? And how far did they get? I can't answer that, but I think I'll fix the Tetromino bridge, machine, ring thing. I say I think because it's not in the schematics. And what I'm doing is hack work at best. Try it and see if it works. another file from the data stream. Listen to this. Mother and father think of our discoveries as a language, a code. But I think they're wrong. They're so caught up in the technical details of running the experiments and upgrading the machine that they're not paying attention to the patterns we're finding, to the symmetries, the harmonies, the melodies. The fundamental language of reality is a kind of music. And it's beautiful. Beauty is an inherent property of the cosmos.
listening to Miranda talk about beauty made me think. Okay, this might be super weird and kind of pretentious, but I, I honestly mean it. What is beauty? Like, where does it exist? Is it just in our minds? Or is there some objective component? Something quantifiable? I always thought it was just perception. But if I understand her correctly, Miranda sees beauty as a property of the universe itself. So if it's completely subjective, if we're gone, does that mean there's no more beauty? If that's true, then doesn't that mean that we have a responsibility to survive as a species? Even to grow so that more beauty can exist? That's, that's a really powerful image. Beauty flowering in the universe as intelligence spreads. Thank you. I hope you're right. The southern part of the island is a natural desert, basically just due to the chemical composition of the soil. I haven't been able to work out why it's so warm, though. It could be a warm ocean current or something to do with the megastructure's thermal output. New Jerusalem doesn't have the kind of equipment I'd need to figure that out. I hope so. I understand why he was impatient, but he should have been more careful. Yeah, everyone knew Cornelius. After Eustathius retired, he was the only one left who was there since the beginning. Except I guess none of us really knew him after all. We all thought he was lost in the past, always studying the archive and the simulation. But he actually had all these secrets. And a daughter. Yeah, even after centuries, they can still surprise you. Mostly just made sure Pellegrino didn't mess up the VTOL. We only have a handful of them, and while they look cool on the outside, the truth is they're held together by gaffer tape and good intentions. There's a reason Melville's always complaining. You're right. I guess we never think about how easily tragedies can happen when we don't pay attention. You neglect something here, cut some corners there, and then suddenly someone is gone. I think that's one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. I hope it's true. Okay, this may sound like a robot joke, but I love heavy metal, especially the more melodic kind. It's big, it's epic, it's full of emotion. You can really get lost in it. Actually, I named Bruce after Bruce Dickinson, the lead singer of Iron Maiden. They used to call him the Air Raid Siren, which is also what my Bruce sounds like.
early days, humankind lived in a world of unexplained wonders and terrors. The powers of the elements were understood in terms of gods and spirits. After all, how else could one explain thunderstorms and earthquakes? But as the realm of scientific knowledge expanded, the realm of the mystical began to shrink. The sacred grove, as Hegel wrote, was reduced to mere timber. But as superstition retreated, another thing was lost, meaning. In a purely mechanical universe, people yearned for the comfort provided by gods and spirits. But there was no way back. But what about the beauty of the universe? The perfection of everything around us, couldn't they see that? Not sure I can see that, Miranda. But I do think there was another way, a way forward instead of back. Faith not in an invisible world, but in ourselves, in each other, in the inherent value of consciousness and civilization. They never really found it, but I think that in those last months when their whole species was dying, they caught a glimpse of it. And that's how your mother was born.
silent. What is a prophet? And what is a tyrant? Mankind had no more cause for war, it would make war for sport instead.
One day, undoubtedly, an expedition will pass by this island. It will seek to document facts and statistics to enumerate reasons for us not to look more closely. That is what we do now. We seek facts rather than truth. Because truth might frighten and unsettle the comfortable people who like to sit in their conference rooms and debate which corners we should cut today. These people like to imagine the chaos that could come one day, like a comforting fairy tale of distant darkness. But they do not see the chaos that is at our walls right now, the chaos that also lives within us, a force that is both necessary and appalling. Design for an improved charging station. Fascinating, but not relevant. creature of clay. The forge burns bright, but the sky is troubled with clouds. A mortal has ascended Olympus without the permission of Zeus. Your friend wanders in dreams, caught between moments. He stands upon the bridge between yesterday and tomorrow, his eyes fixed upon the surface of the sun. And so the workings of Olympus are disrupted. Pandora, fearing the wrath of the gods, has broken the paths to ascension. Only Prometheus can help you, for he has always favored humankind over the gods, and would see Olympus pass into your hands. But he is bound in the heart of the mountain. Break his chains, and he will show you the way. safe to assume that Olympus is the entity's term for the megastructure. It looks like our best chance of rescuing Byron is finding Prometheus and freeing him. How do you free a weird glowing ghost thing? I suspect these entities exist within the megastructure systems, and what we're seeing is just how they manifest to communicate with us. I don't really care what they are. For now, let's play along. <laughs> 